I dare say that what we have here is nothing short of a vital exploration of our contemporary world. You certainly, you meaning your team, have given us the tools to face the unknown with, shall I say, greater wisdom and maybe even foresight. I think post-normal times gives us a mechanism to make sense of today's world where what was once normal is no longer working. Where things are moving at speeds never before seen. And where the scope and scale of events and impacts are nearly unimaginable. Plunging us into the depths of complexity and simultaneity. Let me first frame the discourse with some historical perspective. In the twilight of the Cold War, a flame was ignited, ushering in a new hope for world order, which would be defined by its multipolarity, multiculturalism, and a plurality of ideas and voices. Accepting, of course, the occasional flickering, this flame burned bright through the 80s, through the 90s, and into the new millennium. But only two decades into that, and what has been prophesied as the so-called Asian century, that flame is being nearly snuffed out by the resurgence of protectionism and isolationism, exacerbated, no doubt, by the COVID-19 pandemic, and above all, exponentially compounded by the most sinister and blatant brand of settler colonialism ever known in modern history. The ongoing mass slaughter and destruction in Gaza serves as a stark reminder of the fragility of peace in our world. This tragedy is a global moral crisis that demands our immediate attention. The devastation in Gaza manifests the broader disarray within the international system, a world where the traditional mechanisms of diplomacy and conflict resolution are increasingly inadequate in addressing the realities of the 21st century. But significantly, and most tragically, the magnitude of the barbarity and cruelty of the ongoing genocide being perpetrated itself speaks to the quote-unquote stark realities of our post-normal times. It isn't that such vicious inhumanity hasn't been unleashed before in our history. It's just that it is being committed with such utter impunity and audacity and it befuddles our minds that absolutely nothing can be done about it. Indeed, there's no paucity of what's being said, the condemnations, the mass protestations worldwide, even the pronouncements of guilt and criminality by what is supposedly or what are supposedly the apex judicial institutions of the world. Both the ICJ, the ICC can proclaim Israel's criminal culpability, but they can't stop the carnage. Indeed, and I don't mean to be cynical here, with very few exceptions, it is full of sound and fury signifying nothing. And there's a rub, which is why the Malaysian government has adopted what some might regard as unconventional approaches. So we know that our protestations, while indeed warranted, will come to nothing without more. So working with our close friends across the Muslim world and beyond, we are unwavering in advocating for a peaceful resolution. Therefore, after meticulous planning with special partners like Egypt, we have brought to Malaysia a number of Palestinians. To be precise, 41 injured, for medical treatment, and 86 family members, including children. Now, to the detractors, and critics. Let me say that in a world where collective action is in great deficit, individual countries must do what they can. Each act of kindness, no matter how small, adds a spark of light to the world and redeems our humanity. It is our duty, even in our darkest hour, to offer our own glow, to nurture a collective brilliance that illuminates the path ahead for all of us, turning 
to the economic sphere, the US-China rivalry, which began just as a dispute over trade imbalances, maybe even tariffs. This has now escalated into a full-blown struggle for technological supremacy. At the heart of this conflict lies the semiconductor industry, a critical component of the global economy. The US decision to impose export controls on advanced semiconductors to China is less about protecting intellectual property than about shaping the future of global power dynamics. By limiting China's access to cutting-edge technology, the US seeks to slow China's rise as a global superpower so that it remains at the top of the geopolitical food chain. But then again, we're living in post-normal times. And what used to work before may not necessarily do so today. For one, China won't just let the grass grow under their feet. On the contrary, they have tripled down on efforts to achieve technological self-sufficiency, pouring billions of dollars into R&D to become, eventually, the apex leader in the digital economy. So I would like to uh, talk about NVIDIA and how Huawei is fast catching up. Now, according to the naysayers, because the US chip transactions, because of the sanctions of the US chip are substantial, they limit China's ability to innovate. That's according to them. And therefore, they force China to grey market their hardware. Of course, you will hear this kind of refrain if you listen to Bloomberg or any of the Wall Street media. The fact is that the US needs to pile on the pressure in order to maintain digital superiority. Now, does it occur to us that every time the US takes measures to curtail China's progress, China bounces back and bounces back with a vengeance? And now the same is being said about Huawei getting to compete against Nvidia in the AI chips war. No way, they say. Huawei's scale is just too minuscule to pose any threat and NVIDIA is still years ahead. Well, that's what they said about Tesla being un in unbeatable in EV cars, and we know what's happening now and how China tech giants are trouncing the competition where even Apple has given up the ghost. Friends and colleagues, lest we become excessively fixated on the Sino-US rivalry, let us consider Europe where the rise of right-wing nationalism, and uh, Scott showed us that part earlier, it represents one of the most insidious developments in the Western world. Populist leaders have harnessed economic anxieties, cultural insecurities, and fears of immigration to gain power. They have positioned themselves as defenders of national sovereignty against the perceived threats of globalization and supranational institutions, which of course, and while of course, always feeding voraciously on a feast of Islamophobia, in addition to their diet of xenophobia. The implications of this trend when conflated with issues such as climate change, pandemics, digital divides, and economic inequality point to a deleterious amplification of the challenges that beset mankind, humankind, womankind. There are no two ways about it. Collective action and cooperation on a global scale is the only way to go. So the upcoming US presidential elections represent a critical moment in this post-normal era, where the outcome will determine, with the exception of Israel, of course, yeah, the future of US foreign policy, trade, international relations, influencing the trajectory of global governance, economic stability, and of course, security. Regardless of the outcome, Malaysia must be prepared to engage with the United States on key issues from international trade to regional stability, while also advocating for a more inclusive and equitable international order. The next big question is what does post-normal times bode for humankind's technical trajectory? The virtual elephant in the room is none other than the rapid advancement of artificial intelligence with its vast potential to revolutionize industries, economies, and societies. In René Descartes' utterance of Je pense dans je suis, or Cogito ergo sum, I think, therefore I am, it was said that he had finally found the holy grail in the quest for the proof of man's existence. 
The question is, can and do machines think? And if they do, can they understand? One view says they can, as evidenced by the giant leaps already achieved in GAI, I think uh, Scott mentioned that, and LMs. Detractors say no. While machines may perform the functions assigned to them by man, their existence does not fulfill the Cartesian sense of existence. To cut a long story short, the issue is that inability to define intelligence in AI has its impact, such as constructing governance mechanisms to strengthen guardrails towards an AI-empowered, yes, self and safe society. In looking at AI, we would ask, can AI be safe? Can artificial intelligence be fair? Would artificial intelligence support the Malaysian values we practice today? Or might the systems developed from principles outside of the country introduce their own versions of reality? Already, it is said that the rise of artificial intelligence poses significant challenges, one being, of course, the black box nature of many AI systems, where decisions are made by algorithms that are opaque and difficult, if not impossible, to understand. This raises serious questions about accountability and trust. Another major concern is the risk that AI systems will entrench and amplify social and economic gaps, disparities, displacing jobs, exacerbating wealth disparities again, and inequities. Hence, the imperative for robust governance frameworks to guide the development and use of AI, grounded in principles that prioritize human dignity, privacy, fairness, and flexible enough to adapt to the rapidly evolving technology landscape. As we navigate this complex and often chaotic world, it is crucial that we remain adaptable, forward-looking, and resilient. In this regard, we thank the Prime Minister for having given the term post-normal times, increasing currency through both national and international platforms. It is also laudable that those behind the development and dissemination of post-normal times, Scott, Zia, Asmin, and all of you, have been careful not to drink from the cup of hubris. In navigating the nooks and crannies of post-normal times, the Anwar administration introduced the Malaysia Madani, framework where the essentials of traditional policy making are set back on course. It is a reaffirmation of the importance of our national values and our ethical foundations, which have been allowed to slide into secondary consideration. There must be willingness to embrace complexity, engage in deep critical thinking, and to find creative solutions to the problems we face. The post-normal times exhibition serves as both a warning and an inspiration, reminding us that while we cannot control the forces of change, we can shape our responses to them. Above all, we must strive to build a nation that is resilient in the face of uncertainty, adaptable, to change and committed to the principles of justice, equity, and sustainability. Let us do so with a clear vision and a commitment to the principles that guide us. By embracing these values, we can ensure that Malaysia not only survives, but thrives in this post-normal world. Thank you.